Alright guys, welcome back to this year's second and final installment of What's in the Twilight Sky. Okay, so it's July, which means we've passed the summer solstice. The days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer. But for us here in the UK latitudes, we still won't have a night time. I explained the three stages of twilight in last month's video. So as the sun hits the horizon, we have the sunset time. Then when the sun is between naught and six degrees below, we have civil twilight. As it moves between six and 12 degrees below, we have nautical twilight. And then between 12 degrees and 18 degrees, we have astronomical twilight. Anything lower than 18 degrees below the horizon, that is night. That is when we are completely within the shadow of Earth and that is as dark as it gets. But during these bright summer nights, we can still see noctilucent clouds. June has been a very good month for noctilucent clouds. People are no longer calling them rare anymore. But noctilucent clouds are clouds that reside over the polar regions, very high up, about 85 kilometers up in the mesosphere and the during the summer months the light of the sun as it's below the horizon catches the underneath of these clouds and causes them to glow and shine in the night sky they're best shot with slightly longer focal lengths so something like a 50 mil or an 85 mil and even this shot i took was at 200 mil uh, when the the noctilucent clouds are very low on the horizon but as the sun begins to rise uh, there's a chance that you will see the noctilucent clouds grow higher into the sky they were always there you just can't see them with the naked eye until the sunlight catches the underneath of them but as it gets closer to sunrise you may find yourself able to put a wide angle lens on and get a bit more of a wider scene a small correction on something i said last month i mentioned that the best time to shoot them would be during new moon this is this is not true the moonlight doesn't affect no the visibility of noctilucent clouds so apologies for that i really hope i didn't discourage anyone from going out and trying to shoot noctilucent clouds now talking of the moon new moon is on the 13th and because the milky way is out pretty much all night we have a big milky way window something about the 4th to the 23rd of this month nearly the whole month you can photograph the milky way it's not going to be as bright or as colorful as it would be during sort of peak darkness in in may or the other side of the frame in august uh, but this is an image I took in Snowdonia last month. You see, you can still get some pretty good detail out of the Milky Way. You might not get the colour out of the core, um, but don't neglect the Milky Way. Even though it's bright, you can still photograph the Milky Way this month. As for the planets this month, you'll see that as the sun sets, Venus will dominate the western skies. And as Venus is closer to the Sun compared to Earth, we only ever see Venus in the evening or in the morning, giving it the name the morning evening star. And during July, you'll find it in the west just after sunset. It's the brightest planet in the night sky. And then as night begins to fall, we'll find Jupiter in the southwest. Saturn will be in front of the Milky Way in the southern skies and Mars will rise in the southeast at about half past 11 depending on where you are. Now both Saturn and Mars are in their retrograde motion this month but Mars will also reach opposition this month so Earth will be directly between Mars and the Sun meaning that Mars will shine the brightest it will shine for this year. Now, unfortunately, Mars reaches opposition on the 27th, which is the same date as the full moon. So we won't really get to appreciate the, the, the true brightness of Mars on that day. But the 27th is a, a special day for another reason, and that is a total lunar eclipse. Now, to explain what a total lunar eclipse is, I found this uh, cool animation in the public domain of NASA Goddard Media Library, and it just explains things really well. So check this out. If you looked at the moon over the course of a few weeks, you'd probably notice that it looks slightly different every day. The change in its shadow is based on where the moon is in its orbit. We call this cycle the phases of the moon, and it occurs roughly once a month. At least twice a year, however, something quite different happens. The moon passes through the shadow cast by the Earth, causing it to look extremely unusual for a short period of time. From the Earth, the moon will appear to darken and turn a deep red before eventually returning to normal. This is called a lunar eclipse. 
If we were to look at what happens from space during an eclipse, it would go something like this. First, the moon passes through what's called the penumbra, where the sun's light is only partially obscured. This results in only a slight darkening of the moon. As the moon continues along its path, however, it enters what's called the umbra, where all direct light from the sun is blocked. But if the sun is blocked, why does the moon turn red? When light from the sun goes by the side of the Earth, it passes through a long and thick layer of Earth's atmosphere. Shorter wavelengths of sunlight, like blue, are scattered by the atmosphere, so by the time the light has finished its trip to the moon, more of the longer wavelengths, like red, are left over. On the Earth, the same thing happens at sunset as the ground you stand on gradually passes into night. As the eclipse ends, the moon leaves the umbra, returns to its normal color, and then leaves the penumbra, brightening and resuming its original cycle. Overall, the whole process lasts only from a few minutes to a few hours, so you'll have to be quick if you want to see it. But, as long as you're willing to stay awake, you'll catch the moon as you won't see it too often. And this is a map of how much of the total lunar eclipse you can see from your location. For those of you in the UK, the moon will rise during totality. The moon, the moon will already be in a total eclipse as it's rising. Now normally moon rises are pretty red anyway because the light gets uh, scattered from Earth's atmosphere. So this moon rise will be extra red and then you will see the shadow kind of come off the moon and the moon will go back to its normal sort of white brightness. I'll be over in Turkey so I get to experience pretty much most of the eclipse. I can watch it sort of dim and fade into the crimson red and then come out of the penumbra again. As for conjunctions this month, a very thin crescent moon and Venus will be about 1.6 degrees apart on the 15th and also the 16th. So have a look in the western skies just after sunset and you should be able to, to see that conjunction. There are a few meteor showers active this month, nothing too significant. The main two being the Delta Aquarius and Alpha, the Alpha Capricornids, but both of these peak at the end of the month during full moon, so we won't get to experience them that well anyway but they do sometimes bring fireballs uh, extremely bright meteors um, so keep an eye out this month and to increase your chances just look to the south uh, just after midnight when the radiant point of these meteor showers is very low on the horizon you have a chance of maybe catching some fireballs and if you're lucky uh, an earth grazer which is a fireball that enters earth's atmosphere and leaves Earth's atmosphere. So it kind of skims across the surface of the atmosphere and they shine incredibly bright and sort of fragments up in the night sky. It's an incredible sight. Also, the Perseus begins to become active this month, but that doesn't peak until uh, August. So I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more next month. On to the hashtag Wittens. Last month, I asked you guys to take photos of your twilight scenes. Now, this is actually pre-recorded because at the end of June I'm going to have an operation on my nose. So right now future me is probably lying in bed recovering. But I will try and film something after my operation. Maybe I'll just do a voiceover on your images or I'll just show you some of my favourite images from this month. But future me can tell you how good they are. Alright guys, I'm going to keep this short and sweet because there actually weren't that many entries that defined twilight for me. I did love this image of Lostin's tent in Snowdonia and you've got this beautiful backdrop with the twilight colours and the stars starting to come out. It looks like an absolutely gorgeous evening to be out. I also really like this International Space Station pass taken by Marina and again you've got those twilight colours just lining the horizon and the, the street lights down there which almost look like lava flowing which is quite cool. But my favourite for this month was taken by Kieran and you have Jupiter in the twilight skies. There's some nice thin cirrus clouds there that just add an extra bit of mysticism. It's a really well executed, beautifully composed image. This is my favourite this month. This month I want you guys to tag your pictures of the Noctilucent clouds. Now I know June has been a really good month for Noctilucent clouds so I will be looking back through all the June photos and feel free to tag those up as well. And yeah, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.